From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. Painting the town purple to spread one important message. That Relay for Life is coming up, and local leaders want you to take steps to find a cure for cancer. And later, a school also picked purple as the color of the day. How the little ones are also getting involved in the fight for a cure. Good evening, and thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Kristen Bazinski. Purple, purple, everywhere. That is the goal, to paint the town purple, but not because it's a pretty color. It actually represents an effort to find a cure for cancer and to support those who have the terrible disease and to also remember those who have lost the battle. News 13 stopping by City Hall in Hazleton Tuesday afternoon, where mayors from all over the greater Hazleton area came together to proclaim Relay for Life Month. From May 1st to June 1st, it's all about celebrating a great relay for the American Cancer Society. This signature event wouldn't be complete without purple bows, not just all over City Hall, but everywhere in Greater Hazleton and beyond. If you have a business, your cars, your homes, your bicycles, whatever you travel in, buses, everything. So support the American Cancer Society and paint the town purple. Let's make an effort to wipe out this uh, horrible disease that affects every single person in the greater Hazleton area. Every single mayor of all these communities that are represented here today support the fight against cancer. To me, I'm an American Cancer Society volunteer for many, many years, and it means a lot to me. The relay is one of their major events where they collect an awful lot of money and it's great to give it recognition. Today for me especially uh, hits home. I have a dear friend of mine who was just diagnosed with cancer um, so therefore I encourage everybody, the citizens of Makadu, to reach deep in their pocket and help out for this worthy cause. We're hoping that all the Cunningham residents put the purple bows out everywhere and uh, donate some money and, and let's have fun with it. I mean it's an important cause but it's also something that can unite the communities and uh, we're all together today doing this and it's a lot of fun and I hope, uh, I hope everyone gets involved. It, it, it's our way of saying thank you to all the countless volunteers that come together to help fight this terrible disease and, and help work for a cure. We've all been touched by it and uh, it's just our way to say thank you not only to those in Relay but those in our community who help support it. That's a big thing too. And you can show your support by purchasing a purple bow and then hanging it proudly. To purchase one of those bows for a donation of $20 to the American Cancer Society, which will go to Relay for Life, you can call 582-4905. Purple ribbons, purple t-shirts, purple everything today as members of the community, including the McAdoo Catholic community, painted their town and their school purple to honor an influential woman, mother, and friend who they lost to cancer. News 13 stopping by the Catholic school in McAdoo where the entire school was colored purple as students were dressed in the Relay for Life color while drawing and coloring decorations for the Team Janine tent that will be at Hazleton's Relay. We spoke with the captain of Team Janine about paint the school purple. Today, the children were very much involved in our Relay for Life team, Janine. Uh, Janine Palushak was a mom that came in here and uh, was part of our school family. We started a team uh, in her memory for Relay for Life, and it's our first year. And the children just embraced it and really wanted to get involved. Like the boys said, uh, JJ was a big part of their school family, and uh, they wanted to help out. JJ was... Uh, actually one of my first friends when I first came to this school last year and he was a really really cool kid like he's someone everyone wants to be friends with and all but his mom though was like one of the famous people I think on this planet because she was a cancer victim she taught us courage hope prayer she showed us all like what it really meant to have courage and you know fight now the kiddos supported the cause by donating a dollar and wearing purple. Over $150 was donated and that money will go towards Team Janine and the fight against cancer in the Relay for Life taking place June 1st and 2nd here in Hazleton. Best of luck to the McAdoo Catholic family. It was a day to celebrate as our media partner, the Standard Speaker, 
has been around for now five years since joining the Times Shamrock family. The transition that happened in 2007 has allowed the standard speaker to increase their footprint and cover much more news. News 13 stopping by the standard speaker in Hazleton, where a lot of celebrating was taking place from CEOs, managers, staff members, and media partner, our own Sam LaSam. It was five years ago today that the standard speaker was purchased by Times Shamrock Communications. From this purchase, the paper has not only continued its tradition of local coverage, but was able to expand by gaining access to Times Shamrock's regional reach. News 13 spoke with two managers of the paper about the benefits of the change of ownership. Stuff that we couldn't get covered in Hazleton because maybe uh, you know some of our our, uh, our staffing we've got more information from the northern part of the county as well as stuff in Schuylkill County that's that that we get covered from uh, the Potts Republican, but it's also allowed our people here to focus on the local aspect of Hazleton. Our local coverage uh, right up and down 81 is just great. We pay attention to the community, we pay attention to the schools, local politics, and primarily the people. The Walzer family had previously run the paper for more than 80 years before the Lynette Haggerty family bought it. With the new owners promising to keep the paper local, today was a celebration of acknowledging the success of the paper over the past five years. Well, a lot has changed within the Hazleton City Police Department since a new top cop hit the streets. Chief Frank D'Andrea talked about some of those changes with Hazleton business people at the Chamber of Commerce in downtown Hazleton early Tuesday. The chief filled the folks in on his initiatives to fight crime in Hazleton and about issues that he and his officers are tackling head on. I think some of the big issues for the members of the downtown business district for the chamber are how the police department can work with them, how they could work with the police department so that we could try to better the community. And one way the chief hopes to accomplish this is by cracking down on speeders. We'll have more on that coming up at 530. The chief actually lets motorists know where police will be sitting, just waiting for those drivers who choose not to follow the law. 27 airports across Pennsylvania will improve facilities and enhance safety with a $12.6 million investment of federal and state funds, and that includes Hazleton's airport. Governor Tom Corbett announced today that the Hazleton Municipal Airport will receive just under $224,000 to design a runway safety area improvement project and about $94,000 in state aviation development program funds to acquire aircraft refueling and maintenance equipment. The governor said more than 290,000 people in Pennsylvania rely on the aviation industry for jobs, which is why it is vital to maintain investments in state airports so they can continue operating safely and are able to expand to meet business demands. The state has 133 public use airports and heliports. The American Civil Liberties Union is taking on Pennsylvania's new voter identification law and will take that challenge to court, claiming it is unconstitutional and will disenfranchise tons of thousands of voters across the state. The new law was tested last week on primary election day and requires voters to show a valid form of identification before, before casting their ballot. The requirement won't be enforced by poll workers until general election day, which is November 6th. According to the ACLU, the law will disproportionately affect older citizens, people with disabilities, racial minorities, and lower income people. Well, the Helping Hands Telethon is this weekend and it's back in Greater Hazleton, so we want you all there. Coming up, we welcome two live guests from the special school to tell you more about how you can lend a helping hand on Saturday. And later, they're not only brothers, but they're accused of a serious crime they committed in our area together. Stay with us. Your winning midday lottery numbers on your screen right now. If you played, good luck. Here they are. Daily number 500, zero, zero, big 43611, Quinto 71480, Treasure Hunt 111, 16, 
26, 28. Again, good luck. We'll be right back. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town, Class de Espanol. This will be held at the Cunningham United Methodist Church every Monday from June 11th to July 23rd from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. You can learn Spanish in a friendly and a culture-rich environment. To sign up or for more information, you can call 570-788-3960. And the Good Shepherd Church Raffle. This will be June 17th after the 10 a.m. Mass, and the winner need not be present. You can win a car or up to $20,000 as a prize. There's only 500 tickets available, and tickets are $100 each. Call the parish order tickets at 570-788-3141. And that's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 extends our deepest sympathies to the family and friends of these recently departed. Lydia Nora Cachula of Quake Egg. Funeral services will be held Saturday at 10 a.m. from the Middlesex Funeral Home in New Jersey. Visitation will be held Friday from, five, from 7 to 9 p.m. and on Saturday from 9.30 to 10 a.m. at the funeral home. Mary Catherine Blazowski of Shenandoah. The Walukovich Orvitz Fell Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Eugenia Rose Carparesso of Brooklyn, New York. Friends may call Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m. at the Harmon Funeral Home. And Julia Morgan, formerly of Tamaqua. A liturgy will be held Thursday at 11 a.m. from the St. John the Baptist Byzantine Catholic Church. The E. Franklin Griffiths Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Tonight's obituary is half and brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes. Call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's. Don't settle for the second pass when dining out. Discover Mia's new low-priced dinner menu for 2012. Remember, there is plenty of free gated parking in the Marco Building lot. Find us on the web at miasrestaurant.com or follow us on Facebook. For this week's super segment, I am here with the Hazleton Area School District Superintendent, Dr. Antonelli, and Mr. Reba, who is the business manager, and we are here in the administration building talking about the budget. Now, first, Dr. Antonelli, tell me how Governor Tom Corbett's proposed budget affects the Hazleton Area School District. There are several factors which will affect our budget. First, the Student Achievement Education Block Grant, which basically lumps together basic education funding transportation for public and non-public schools, and social security payments uh, will have a net effect on uh, decreasing somewhat funding for basic education. Also, the uh, moratorium on uh, reimbursement for uh, PlanCon, uh, which basically uh, will affect projects that have been approved by the state uh, building projects, building expansion projects, which as you know, we currently are undertaking with our Academy of Science and our Maple Manor building. Uh, those projects have been approved. That has uh, uh, occurred, uh, and yet the governor is putting a moratorium on reimbursing us for those projects. Also, Jasmine, the uh, uh, elimination of the accountability block grant, funding for full-day kindergarten will adversely affect us, as will our uh, loss for a cyber and charter school tuition reimbursement Previously, we were reimbursed uh, up to 30% for those costs, but in the last two years, that reimbursement also has been lost. So those factors are going to negatively impact our, uh, our revenue, and yet our expenses are uh, remaining constant and even increasing somewhat. All right, Mr. Reba, where are you right now with your general fund budget? Uh, where, what process are you in right now? We're, uh, we're working with our uh, department heads um, weekly as well as our principals, we're trying to, um, well, a couple things. One, um, as Dr. Tonelli said, we're, uh, our funding is getting cut, but our expenses and a lot of it out of our control are still continuing to escalate. One is the uh, retirement rate for employees um, is, is drastically increasing for next year. Um, so we're trying to look at all of our, our staff and use them you know, the best we can. Um, we did have some retirements. Um, through our staff, Franks, and uh, we're, we're not trying to replace these retirements. We're using people in other positions. So we're basically looking at all of our staff and trying to use everything more efficiently. Okay. Now, can you talk a little bit about what the limit is under state law to increase your tax revenue? 
we're allowed to go up to the Act One um, index with our taxes, which for next year is 2.4 percent. Um, so um, we uh, we did have our preliminary budget with a tax increase, um, but it's really kind of early yet. We'll kind of get into the tax increase probably later in May or in June to see how much we could trim back the expenses and um, whether we're able to uh, to take that index or not. Okay. Is there anything you want to add? Well, we would just encourage the public to attend the meeting this evening, 530 at the administration building. Their input certainly is welcome as we continue to craft this budget so that we can provide a quality education to each and every one of our students. All right, perfect. Thank you so much for your time. For this week's Super Segment, I'm Jasmine Brooks, and I'll send it back to you in the studio. Jasmine, thank you. It sure turned into a warm Tuesday afternoon around the area, a big change than the temps we have been dealing with lately. We sure hope to see conditions like this from Mia Marnell, a second grader at the Valley Elementary School, who took part in East 13's Creative Condition Weather Project and earned herself a free movie pass from Regal Cinemas at the Laurel Mall. Mia shows a sunny day, and that's exactly how the forecast will be on... Wednesday. For tonight, we're going to see some patchy fog, though. We'll dip down to 49 degrees under partly cloudy skies. And Wednesday, up to 70 degrees, slight chance of some showers with partly sunny skies taking you through your Wednesday. We'll check out Thursday, Friday, and Saturday and Sunday coming up tonight, live at 530. Just windows and much, much more, 636-1133 on 1st Street in Freeland. Visit Just Windows and More. Dot com. Also, Fagley Oil Company in Tamaqua and Hazel Township and serving surrounding communities. Visit Fagley's.com or call for more information on Fagley Oil Company at 1-800-572-4925. Your Live at 530 is on deck. Make sure you stay with us. We'll be right back with much more local news. Coming up right now, live at 5.30, on this very first day of May, Hazleton's new top cop is preparing for a crackdown. Next time you hit the road, you better slow down and follow the law. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Hey again, everyone. Thanks for staying with us tonight. I'm Kristen Bazinski. Crime is obviously an ongoing issue in the city of Hazleton. The new top cop has changed many things within the city's department to battle back against those criminals. But he's also targeting traffic violators, those who choose not to slow down, better prepare to pay up. We told you live at 5 that Hazleton City Police Chief Frank DeAndrea spoke to some local business people at the Chamber of Commerce today. Not only did he share some information on new efforts he started to combat crime, but he also gave away some secrets to News 13 on exactly where police will regularly be set up to catch speeders. Broad Street, out by um, Tunison's, also on the other end of Broad Street, up by the Elks Kentucky Fried Chicken, the Arthur Gardner Parkway in two different spots, one by the Water Company, one closer to Poplar Street. Route 309 by what used to be the old Stefanisco's building on Bumper Hill. Diamond Avenue out by Harrison Street and Route 924 on the way to the Salt Shed are all perfect areas for the city to sit and enforce speed on people coming into our community. If we could slow them down before they come into the community, they'll recognize that they need to spend a little bit more time paying attention when they're traveling through it. In addition, DeAndrea says his department will add several more surveillance cameras to be placed in business districts and near playgrounds. The goal, first to deter crime and second to catch the bad guys on camera. A Freeland man is one of three suspects in a reported abduction over the weekend. The three men are accused of kidnapping a 35-year-old Monroe County man. According to today's edition of the Standard Speaker, 37-year-old Dennis Lytle and 39-year-old Thomas Graham, both of Bushkill, face a very long list of charges, including kidnapping. 27-year-old Noel Lytle of Freeland was charged with criminal conspiracy to commit kidnapping, criminal use of a communication facility, and possessing instruments of a crime. 
Pocono Mountain Regional Police are investigating the incident and say the victim was taken from the Wawa in Blakesley. From there, he was then taken to Joe's Quick Mart in White Haven, where Pocono Mountain Police were dispatched to, along with multiple other police departments, after the victim told someone inside the store he had been kidnapped and was being held against his will. The investigation continues. All three men are said to be in jail tonight. Bail for all three set at $100 thousand dollars each. It was a family crime, you could say. Two brothers arrested for breaking into a business and getting away with $30,000 worth of tools. The burglary happened at Monroe Muffler on Route 93 back in mid-April. 21-year-old Eric Scott Creamer was just arrested for his part in that burglary. His younger brother, 19-year-old Douglas Creamer, was arrested a day after for the Hazel Township crime. It was thanks to surveillance video at that business that captured the creamers committing the crime. Police recognized the younger creamer on surveillance video, which showed the brothers approaching the garage and leaving with numerous items they placed in a pickup truck. Troopers went to the creamers home and that's where they found the tools. A 21-year-old Tamaqua man died from his injuries received in a serious accident over the weekend. Nicholas Ziegler crashed his vehicle around noon Saturday on Catawissa Road. Ziegler was headed north on Catawissa Road when he lost control and traveled into oncoming traffic. Police say he was driving at a high speed. Ziegler was thrown from his car after hitting a utility pole. Ziegler was taken to a trauma center where we're told he later died. Hazleton police are looking for the person who damaged a West Hazleton man's car while allegedly trying to steal that vehicle. Michael Rabarchik of Rose Street said his car was parked in the 500 block of Branch Court when the incident happened between 1230 and 7 this morning. Anyone who might have witnessed the incident or knows anything should dial 911. More trouble for a man picked up by federal agents in Freeland last week. While he was hiding out on the north side, he decided to steal from his own mom. Freeland police tell us they have charged Michael Kenny of New Jersey with stealing thousands of dollars worth of jewelry from his mother, Jacqueline, back on April 12th. You remember Freeland police officers assisted U.S. Marshals in arresting Kenny last week in the borough. He was wanted on warrants and accused of sexually assaulting young children around the age of 12. According to court papers, while staying in Freeland, Kenny entered his mother's Ridge Street home, took a shower, and then went into her bedroom and took $5,000 worth of jewelry. His mother found that jewelry missing the very next day. On April 17th, he was cuffed by patrolman Matt Williams and U.S. Marshals, who had active warrants out for him. Also, Officer Williams said in court papers that he received a call from Kenny on April 28th, during which he admitted taking the jewelry and said he gave it to a woman named Betty Jo, who sold it at the Gold and Silver Exchange in the Churchill Mall. News 13 talked to Officer Williams, who said there is no Betty Jo. Kenny made the name up, and that so far the jewelry has not been located. They say April showers bring May flowers, and May is finally here. But are the showers over? We'll take a look at this week's forecast. But first, the annual Helping Hands Telethon is fast approaching. We'll talk live with two members of the Helping Hands Society. It's all coming your way next. And welcome back everyone. Something that I love to talk about and something I'm excited to talk about is the Helping Hands Society. And of course, this weekend marks the annual telethon. And what's exciting about this weekend is it's back in Hazleton and Mary Beth and Joelle joined me from the Helping Hands Society. They're both working very hard to put the telethon together this weekend along with board members and all the volunteers and it's happening Saturday. So Mary Beth, first of all, it's very exciting that we're gonna be in Hazleton. Very exciting. and. It's just so much better for everyone involved. The parents are excited, the children will be excited. <laughs> and it's just, it's good to be back home. And we do service children from different areas and surrounding areas, but this is where our school is. So it just feels like home. It's comfortable and it's, it gives us the opportunity to have the children on almost the entire day and evening. So that's a really good plus. 
Right, and Joelle, so much hard work goes into this between uh, hosts, entertainment, uh, the children having them on, and right. of course getting those phones during and getting those donations to come in. So right. you guys have been working really hard. We have, and we have you coming to help us get those I will phones be there. ringing. I'm bringing so Nate's dog too, the so pressure we'll, we'll is be on. there. Yeah. <laughs> the pressure's on, we'll yep. get the phones ringing. But, Absolutely. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about um, what's gonna go on on Saturday, and we'll talk a little bit more about where the money's gonna go. Joel, you wanna talk about some of the, at the people who will be there that sure. we'll get to see? Sure, um, well Mary Beth will probably talk a little bit more about Danny and the juniors. Oh, yes. She's a little older, so <laughs> she knows a little bit more about them than I do. <laughs> uh, Lady A and Destiny will be there. Um, we have monster truck driver John Seasock, Going to be there. He's actually going to be um, interviewed between one and two, but between twelve and one for the opening hour, he'll be there signing autographs. So anyone can come and get some pictures with him and sign cool. some autographs. Uh, Cynthia Kirshner uh, will be there. Um, I think Tara Two Hill's going to stop by. So Great. it's, it's going to be a really good day. And like she said, the kids are going to be the main focus. You know, uh, they're going to open. They're going to do songs. They're going to be. Just there all day. Right. Yeah. And Danny and the Juniors, I love when Dan I love Danny and the Juniors when they come to the telethon. They're so entertaining. You don't have and to be old to love them. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll break Joel and like Danny. The hop. Yeah, at the hop. Yeah. Uh, but Danny and the Juniors kind of making headlines a lot lately too due to the unfortunate passing of Dick Clark uh, because they do have a history with Dick Clark. And uh, so we're going to have them right here in Hazleton at the Laurel Mall. Yeah, they were very gracious. I mean, when I called, they said, absolutely. We will definitely be there. And, um, you know, they were just on TV on the Dick Clark special when they were after he passed. And he gave them their first gold record, I believe, in 1958 at wow. the Hop. Which even if you don't recognize the name Danny and the Juniors, I think you everyone know knows that it's on TV shows, movies. Yeah. It's been all over the place. Right. And they're fun. They are and fun. We they really bring a lot of people out, as well as Cynthia Kirshner, international model. She's in movies. Um, she's doing a commercial on TV right now for Pantene. So she helps us out a lot, and she's very good. Right, with the children. and John Seesaw, always a nice guy, and uh, loves guy. the children. I know my son just adores John. He's so good with yeah. everyone. Yeah. He really is good with everyone. Uh, where does all this money go, Mary Beth? It's so important, and one thing I, I do want to point out, it's my favorite thing to point out about the Helping Hands Telethon, is it all goes to that little building up on Poplar Street. It goes nowhere else. It goes right there and it goes to all the children who go there. Some have disabilities, some are typical children, but they're all there and they're all special. And that's an important point too. I think um, in the past, people sometimes didn't realize that we service all children, that children that don't have delays, children, um, just the parents want a typical preschool, uh, we have that. And we also have children with minor delays, mm -hmm. you know, maybe speech problems and some more severe, right. but it's, it's a great mix mm -hmm. of children. We have an evening program, our academic helper program for children. Um, some are struggling a little bit in school, some right. a lot, and some just need maybe a year there and they're getting A's. I mean, it's a right. wonderful program that John Seaman started, which right. I have to mention John. Right. Um, it's our first year without him as executive director, so we're gonna be doing a tribute to John and of course, Charlie Prose, mm -hmm. who was at the telethon. He wasn't there last year. He's had some health problems. And, um, and the passing of Ginger Seaman, Virginia Seaman, John's right. wife, so, who was behind the scenes for many, many years Absolutely. and was a great lady. So we want to we wanna really give them a big thank you and re remember them throughout the day. And, right. and I'm sure John will be stopping by, so you'll we see so. John. Um, but the money is going to our programs to keep our programs going, and they're amazing programs. Absolutely. You know, we have outpatient therapies. We take children from infancy mm -hmm. that have developmental delays. And Absolutely. And so it is Saturday, Joelle, the Times, and, and, and also yeah. the invitation to everyone to come on out to the mall. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, starting at 12 noon, and it's ending at 11. And there's so much for everybody to come and see, because not only can you come and just see John Seesock if you're a fan, or see you, or see some of these other celebrities that we have that are going to be there. We're going to have like eight tables worth of tricky trays, which actually was just on the screen. Um, Very cool. All different gift baskets that you can buy tickets so relatively cheap for. You can, yeah. you can get like 25 of them for 
for five dollars or so right. ten dollars. Um, you can pick whichever ones you want to get. You can see the kids singing. There's Nathan right there. Um, <laughs> so it's just a really fun day. If you're at Boscov's buying something, step on down, see the kids. Absolutely. 12, 12 to eleven. All right. Um, very good. It's free to just walk. By yeah, absolutely. I know Nathan and I will be joining the show probably around three or four o'clock. So I'm excited about that. I also yeah. want to mention we have sure. a little kitty corner this year with um, Marina Norris from the Fashion Spa, a new okay. spa that opened. She's going to be doing free little manicures for Aww. the children and I think maybe even some pedic pedicures. So. Oh, that'll be so cute. And we're going to have other activities, um, a lot of things to do. And it's yeah, many, many, actually. many people to thank. And of course, the staff, the staff and the board of directors and chips uh, have just been amazing Absolutely. and I'm just so proud and privileged to be a part of it so right so this is your first telethon as executive it director is. very and exciting it's been going well and I hope it continues to and a big thank you to all the people out there that really really support us they've been just astounding and I'm again very very grateful great so we kick off at noon yes so 11 p.m. at yes. the Laurel Mall on yep. Saturday we hope to see you all there or call in a donation uh, you know, every penny counts. You can only give five dollars. Five dollars mm -hmm. can go a long way when it comes to uh, helping hands. And you know, we, I just actually real quick, we have this raffle that if even if you can't make it, you can uh, call in, make a donation. We have this fishbowl area, um, and you can get a raffle ticket and get your name on there to win an autographed. Uh, Football by Joe Paterno. We have cool. a, a condo in Florida available, and it's there's tons of, of items yeah, on this raffle ticket. Great. So they're yeah. five dollars a piece. So even if you just want to stop by and get one of those, or call in and ask for one of those. All right, very okay. good. So we'll see everybody at the Laurel Mall Saturday starting at noon. We go all the way to 11 p.m. So stop in and say hello and help out a really great school here in Hazelton and some really special kids. Uh, Mary Beth, Joelle, thanks so much. Good Thank luck. You. I know you're working you. really hard, Thank and I'll you. see you Saturday. See you Absolutely. Saturday. Okay, Thank sounds you. good. Well, it sure turned into a warm Tuesday afternoon around the area. A big change than the temps we have been dealing with lately. We sure hope to see conditions like this from Mia Marnell, a second grader at the Valley Elementary School, who took part in News 13's Creative Condition Weather Project and earned herself a free movie pass from Regal Cinemas at the Laurel Mall. Mia shows a sunny day, and that's exactly how the forecast will be on Wednesday. First, we get through tonight with a low down to 49, some patchy fog out there. But as we look at your four-day outlook, we see that the clouds take a hike and we see some sunny skies for your Wednesday slight chance of some showers we're up to 70 Thursday and Friday chance of some thunderstorms 65 Thursday 76 on Friday and then on Saturday telethon day there's a slight chance of some showers it's going to be 70 degrees and partly sunny for a uh, majority of the day so it's a perfect day to head on out to the Laurel Mall and support the kids of the Helping Hands Society. Your forecast live at 530 brought to you by the Lazy Dog Salon Dog and Cat Grooming North Broad Street West Hazelton 459-0310. Call and make your furry friend an appointment today and also yummy Valley High Drive in Route 93 West Hazelton ice cream food they have it all stop by Valley High now open for the season. And coming up on News 13, our Erica Alponte tells you all about a gigantic indoor yard sale you won't want to miss in this week's edition of Family Time. And sports action is headed your way as Freddie B fills us in on the very latest. Stay with us. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Well, hey, the area Cougar baseball team they had their hands full yesterday. They had a guy that had four major league scouts in the house to watch them. So the Cougars knew that, uh, hey, this could be a tough one. Well, early on, they scored two runs. Actually jumped out to a 2 nothing lead, and you figured, like, uh, maybe stop the presses. Cougars ready to uh, steal the show. Didn't quite work out that way. Anthony Zaloga pitched very, very well. Uh, actually was pitching toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Valley West Alexander, but... Uh, he had one bad inning, and that would end up being the difference in this ball game. Final score, Wyoming Valley West 4, Hazelton area 2, and please notice again, that error column, it continues to always have crooked numbers in it for this Cougar team, and it's been something that has hurt them all season long, and it continues to hurt them. They get back into action against Pitts and Patriots. That'll be on Thursday, and it's almost a must win if they have any chance to still uh, win the division in the Wyoming Valley Conference. 
Meanwhile, Marion Monai area hooked up at a good one, and despite the crooked number of errors there, Marion comes away with the win. 5-3 Colts over Monoy area. In softball, well, uh, Valley West came in here with a less than stellar record. You figured it would be a laugher, right? No, it turned out to be a nail biter. But as the Lady Cougars have done all season long, they find a way to win. They did yesterday. one nothing. The Lady Cougars get the victory over Wyoming Valley West. Meanwhile, Marion shuts out Mauna area, and uh, they keep on rolling right there. Marion comes away with the win. North Schuylkill pounds out a big win over Jim Thorpe. That's our Schuylkill League softball wrap-up. Meanwhile, let's go to track down in the Schuylkill League. Marion just pummels Schuylkill Haven on the boys' side. Girls' side, well, it was closer, and matter of fact, Schuylkill Haven came away with the win. If a final score is in the 70s and it was a pretty close match, you need 76 to win. That's the magic number. Schuylkill Haven, you've got it. Barely, they come away with the W. Volleyball action tonight. Pottsville on the road at Governor Mifflin. Now let's go from Scholastic to the pro ranks where Pawtucket, edged by Columbus 6-4. Kanzler had a hit. Russell now batting 287. Kyle Landis didn't play as Akron team loses to uh, Binghamton 3-2. Today, Gwinnett comes into town. That's the Braves' AAA team against Columbus. Akron and Binghamton continue. Rochester and Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, Charlotte, and the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Yankees and Orioles, game two of the three-game series. Seattle and uh, Tampa Bay after Joe Madden's team eked one out in extra innings last night. Phils, they uh, start a series with Atlanta. The Mets are in Houston, and the Pirates are playing the Cardinals. American Hockey League depends. Skating in the Calder Cup playoffs tonight. Puck will drop at 7.30 up in St. John's as the Calder Cup. Hey, how hungry are you tonight? The most popular wing night in town is up at Bottlenecks. That's right, they've got the area's best wings. And every Tuesday, they're just $9.95 for all you can eat. All the delicious flavors. You can have as many as you like. You can't go wrong and they are delicious. Up at Bottlenecks, every Tuesday. They sponsor us not only on Tuesdays, but it's a great place. Well, the summer months are approaching and with that nice weather comes yard sales. So for this week's family time, we're here to talk with Alexa Bonomo about a yard sale happening here at Holy Family Academy. So Alexa, can you tell me just a little bit about uh, this great event that's coming up? Uh, yes, the yard sale will be held on Saturday, May 12th. Doors open at 7.30 a.m. and it will go till 1 p.m. It is benefiting the Victory Drive, which is a scholarship fund set up to help families with tuition costs so that they can have their children stay at Holy Family and support Catholic education. That's a great cause helping uh, the kids with their tuition. What kind of things will be at this yard sale? This is our second one. Last year we raised about $1,100, so we were really happy and pleased to be able to help as many families with that as we could. You will be able to find uh, lots of holiday decor. Last year we had a lot of baby and children items from car seats, large toddler toys, bikes, books, um, housewares. So we have a lot of things for everyone. And who are selling the things at the yard sale? The families of Holy Family are kind of spring cleaning, going through things. So we are asking for gently used or new items that they no longer need. So somebody else may, would, you know, may be able to use them. Great. And just one question, why a yard sale of all kind of events? Why, why pick this one? Uh, lots of people like yard sales and lots of people like to get their house cleaned out for spring. So it's something that uh, the community can participate in and it's something that we feel um, has benefited us last year. So we'd like to continue to be able to do it. Great, all right, well if you'd like to come out and support uh, the yard sale, it's happening May 12th here at the Holy Family Academy in the gym. And for this week's Family Time, I'm Erica Aponte and I'll send it back to you in the studio. Erica, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we are out of time tonight, so that'll do it for us. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. You can catch this newscast again with a rebroadcast throughout tonight or simply go to our website anytime you'd like at ssptv.com. You'll find everything Greater Hazleton and beyond. It's all just a click away. On behalf of all of us here at News 13, have yourselves a great night. We'll see you back here on Wednesday. Good night.